learned to walk by faith. But you gave me a promise that you would never leave. You would lead and guide me. Lord, I do never seen the likes of such a demonstration of appreciation for a pastor for so long. Three hours, three hours. What's wrong with you Jamaicans? We don't do that back in Trinidad. Three hours to tell a man thank you? Something has to be different about this man. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Maybe I should transfer to Jamaica. <laughs> wow, but Pastor Woodburn, you must have done something awesome, you and your wife, for the hearts of all of these church members and churches to show in such a tangible Lord have mercy and have a weekend to and trip across to New York. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Thank God. Thank God for you. I think I need to get the microphone checked here. Uh, let me check with this one here. I hope it's not mistaken. Yes, we've got to get these things working. I don't plan to be long because the day is far spent check one two yes let's see what happens with this one sounds a little better i hope it does not short as i speak just a few words i want to leave with you before we leave today i've been taking my cue from the book of joshua chapter one and verse three joshua says every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have i given to you as I said unto Moses, I shall repeat, every foot or every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon in northeast Jamaica shall be yours. As I have given to you and as I have said unto Moses. So my simple charge is 
step on it. Children of Israel have been traveling for such a long time and they have been promised this special land to which they have never gone. And God who had already seen their desire to end the journey promised them that every place, Joshua was now in charge, Moses was dead. And Joshua was now given this charge to go and take what God has given I like the tense that God used. He says, every place that I have given. He did not say, if you step on it, I will give it to you. He says, it's yours. So step on it. He also said these words knowing that the Canaanites were occupying the land. But God is not concerned about the enemies that took up residence on a land that he owns. Oh, Lord have mercy. I'm not going to get any amens this afternoon. Uh, the fact of the matter is, if it's the Lord's land, the enemies are squatting. I want to declare to you that it could be that the enemy is squatting on territory that does not belong to him. That's why there are some Jericho walls in your life. Because the enemy has built up a wall on a territory that does not belong to him. God has the title deed to your land. And this land of Canaan, I must tell you, is not simply a piece of property to which you must now step on. I want to indicate to you there are two things that I have seen in this text which I want to leave with you. This land of Canaan, I want to first of all see as God's promises to his people. God has promised things to his people but sometimes we don't get those things because we don't step on his promise. We've got to learn how to step on what God said. And don't move until God has given what he has already granted. Somebody ought to hear me this evening. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 perhaps is the twin of this chapter 1 verse 3 in Joshua. Chapter 1 verse 3 in Ephesians says, Blessed be the God of the Father of the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So Canaan is not simply a place, it's a mindset. And too very often we as Christians limit our progress in life. Because of the mindset we have of God. Am I talking truth here today? God is bigger than what you can ever imagine. And sometimes in our prayers, we squat. <laughs> I recall Napoleon. When one of his subjects had asked him a, a request that was quite extravagant. And others were shocked at the magnitude of the request. And Napoleon says, I like his request because he magnifies me by the magnitude of his request. If he can ask for big things, it's because he knows I have great power. And I want to declare to you, many Christians do not know how to ask God for big things. We limit God. God to the small puny things that we ourselves can get but the God who I know gets excited when we magnify him with big requests you've got to go big with God because we serve a big God let me indicate to you how big this God is uh, Moses perhaps had trouble trying to classify this God so he called him Elohim now, please don't get excited just yet. Let me break down what Elohim means. It's the plural form of the word God. 
So even in the book of Genesis, you will see gods. That's the same word Elohim. Sometimes it's translated as God. Sometimes it's translated as gods. But it means God. My translation of the text is God was so big that he could not be singular. Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, let me break it down for you. You can never, there are some words in English that you can never say in singular. If you call it the plural intensive, you could never say, I want a scissor. You could never say, put on your pajama. You are wearing pant. There are some things you cannot say in singular you must always say it in plural jerusalem is in plural because god already had another jerusalem oh lord have mercy i'm thinking you see god is not limited by your request god is bigger than what we can ever imagine and that's why i like ephesians ephesians is the next book of joshua because god wants to conquer our land he is the heavenly joshua that is coming to step on our land there are some walls he has to break down from our land and he wants to do it if only we give him charge that's why paul says unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we we ask or think according to the power that works in us wait a minute sometimes we misquote the text the text did not say unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly that's not what the text says the text says unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly <laughs> no 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 you didn't hear what i just said <laughs> you see if we say do exceedingly then exceedingly is the adverb of do but no that's not what the text says the text affirms he's already able to do abundantly but paul went a little further to say he exceeds abundantly he goes abundantly above all that you can imagine or think according only to the power that works in you could i tell you how big this god is uh, they call him el shaddai the many-breasted god he is so big he has so many things about him he can show off anytime he wants i told you this god is so big he can be anything anytime anywhere anyhow he wants to be because he's big enough and so he says, give, and it shall be given back to you. But I cannot give you exactly what you need. Because I am always bigger than what you need. So what I give you, it will be pressed down, shaken together. <laughs> running over. <laughs> because I'm always a running over God. I have always enough and to spare. I can never give you exactly what you want. So if you prove me, I will open up just a window of heaven. <laughs> I will open up the windows of heaven. And get this, get this, get this. I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Oh, Lord have mercy. I will pour out a blessing. Because I know you're not re able to receive more than a blessing. So I'm going to pour out a blessing. That there shall not be room enough to receive it. But wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's only opening up the windows. What if he opens up the doors? <laughs> I'm talking about a God who is big enough. He says, come, come, give me your five loaves and two fish and I will give you enough and to spare. You will have more baskets. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, church, you don't hear what I'm saying here. This is a big, awesome God. Big enough to do more than what we can imagine or think. So whatever you could think, he can now do it. So, my charge to Pastor Daniels, Pastor Parks, and all you single men and women, don't limit God by the minitude of your request. Ask for big things. 
Make sure she comes good. <laughs> Honor God by the magnitude of your request and step on it. <laughs> step on his promises. He says, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Well, walk uprightly and step on it. <laughs> he says, the angel of the Lord encamp it round about them that fear him. Well, fear him and step on it. <laughs> he said, if you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Well, dwell and dwell. And he... Come on, step on it, and he will fulfill his promise. Come on, talk to me, somebody. That's the God I serve. Once you do your stepping, he will do his giving. <laughs> but, but, but the tense, the tense worries me. The tense says, he has given. Well, it's consistent with God because he says, I am. God can never refer to himself as I will be. Never, never could he refer to himself as I used to be. He is always amming. <laughs> he always will be is. Oh Lord have mercy. He always will be is. So whatever he will give, he has given. So your wife is already prepared. Just step on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he says, don't limit yourself to Northeastern Conference. He says, every place that you put your foot, uh, go to West Jamaica and step on it. Uh, go to Kencott and step on it. And if you're not getting anybody, come to Trinidad uh, and step on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And God will bless you. He says, every place that you put your foot, Because he has already done what he says he will do. And that's why the Jews never saw time. I'm closing up with this. The Jews never saw time as linear. That's a Greek philosophy. We borrowed our time schedule from the Greeks. So we have past, present, and future. But with the Jews, it was no such thing. They saw time as cyclical. It was a cycle. Are you still here with me? So that things happen as part of a cycle. And for them, there are two tenses. The perfect or the imperfect tense. It's perfect when it's completed. It's imperfect when it's not yet finished. And if it's perfect, it's before them. Because they could see it. We would think the future is in front. But for them, whatever is finished is already before them. It's just a matter of time before it happens. So when, the, when, the, when, when Isaiah wrote the, te the text, he is a lamb, as a lamb before the slaughter. He is wounded. They saw that the Messiah had already come. So they were looking for the Messiah that was slain. I know it's a little tough, a little tough, a tough. So when God says, I have given the land to you, you must see the land. Even if you see Jericho walls. You must see the land, even if you see the enemies. You must see the blessing, even when the enemies come against you. Because he says, when they come up against you like a flood, I will raise a standard against them. Because I've already given you. So if you're battle ready, let not the enemy stop you from conquering the land. You just step on the land, because God has already given you the victory. That's why when they came to conquering Jericho walls, he said, shout. mercy he said shout for i have given you the city not i will but i have given you many times we wait until he blesses us before we praise him <laughs> and that's why many of us limit our praise that's why some of us get mummed and numb because we have not seen the blessing Jesus says, I've already given you the blessing. And sometimes it will come when you shout. 
Oh, you're not making any noise here. Huh? You gotta shout, Brother Daniel. Where are you? Shout, the Lord has given you a wife. Shout, God has already promised you. And whatever God promises, He cannot go back on His promise because He says, My word shall not return void. So if I have said it, it has already happened. So shout, shout, Northeastern Conference. Shout, God has given you the victory. Shout, this land is yours. Shout, evangelism is going forward. I'm not hearing anybody in this place here. Shout, you shall overcome. Shout, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Shout, uh, shout, step on it with Jesus. And shout, because whatever God has promised, he has already delivered. So shout. Thank you.